Right. So in in the context of where the SOM rule and the proposal came from, it was from early 2019. So I have certainly learned a lot as a policy advisor through the COVID pandemic. And the big thing the, the SOM rule falls down on is the taking into account changes in supply. And in, in this case, specifically labor supply, the labor force. And to your question about a fiscal response right now, because we are still in the last stages of fighting inflation, I would not endorse my 2019 proposal of broadly sending out stimulus checks. Even if I had thought right now we were in that recession, it'd be more targeted, it'd be really, you know, thinking about the inflation environment as well. So there, there is a cautionary aspect of, uh, the pol thinking about the policy, but it does it does put the conversation mm -hmm. out there. And to your point about fiscal space, though, if we were to get to a recession, if we were to get to a serious place, we have the fiscal space to respond. Whether we have the political will and kind of yeah. get it all together to respond, that might be a different question. Mm -hmm. And and yet, really, the whole thing about this proposal, the stabilizers, is to let's have conversations outside of time of crisis about how to do fiscal policy as well as possible, um, knowing that we'll need it. Anna Wong, I want to bring you back in here and talk a little bit about what Claudia said regarding labor supply, because I'm curious about... Uh, based on the numbers that we got this morning, how your view on the job market's ability to absorb more layer, labor has changed in just a few months? Yeah, you know, one of uh, Claudia's uh, view is that, um, you know, we're not sure whether this time, the what happened to the unemployment rate after the song rose trigger will happen again, which is that it should continuously rise for another 1.9 to 2 percentage point. So Claudia, uh, uh, this is a, as much as it's a question to Claudia herself. Um, we have been looking at immigration and the and the absorption rates of these immigrants into the labor market, and we did note from the micro data from CPS that the unemployment rate for new immigrants are rising um, very fast. They're currently at 11 percent, and so I, I guess I'm wondering if the economy does lose this uh, ability to quickly absorb these immigrants. Would you still think that the SOM rule would be consistent with the historical pattern where it would continuously rise for another 1.9 to 2 percent? So the the labor supply, both the the immigration that we have now that's pushing up the labor supply and, and at least temporarily or at this, at this time pushing up the unemployment rate, that is causing the unemployment rate to be higher. I think the labor shortages previously had pushed down the unemployment rate. Uh, notably, right, not sustainably. So, you know, the SOM rule again is all about these changes. Uh, it, And yet, so I think there's, my take of where it's at with the increase in unemployment rate is it's it's probably overstating the recessionary dynamics. So we've got these supply dynamics that are very, like it's a whole other uh, topic. And yet under the hood, there still is a weakening in the labor force, a weakening for demand for workers, mm -hmm. right? And to your point, like it, that's the piece that if it gets momentum and it keeps going, that's the recessionary dynamic. It's absolutely, if, if it's really just a matter of we had a bunch of workers come in, you know, the immigrants come in in a big group and it takes time to absorb them, as long as you have a strong labor market, they do get, a, 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 you know, they get jobs, unemployment rate trends back down, but that does require the labor market to be in a good place. So I think that's the question we don't, I, we don't know yet. Has that, you know, where, how bad is that negative momentum? And that's why I said today's report was not encouraging that it's, it's not, I don't think you see a lot of improvement.